This video will show you how to use the preview functionality in Frog to look at the different activities that come installed. If we click on the preview button here on the top uh, tab bar, we see a list of the activities that are installed with this version of Frog. In the future, this list might become longer. Each of these activity types um, let us do different things. For example, the video player plays videos. Uh, it is configured with a URL and the activity types all come with some example data that makes it easier for us to preview. So this uh, component, for example, comes with um, an example URL. This activity type also has a dashboard which we can look at by clicking on the dashboard button. So the way this dashboard works is that it shows us for each student how far they've come in the video. We can uh, see how it reacts if I'm pausing, if I'm moving. Um, and in fact, it's even uh, configured to slowly change color on this bar here uh, to signify to the teacher how long a student has been paused. Uh, so this is just some experimentation with what kind of information uh, we can give to the teacher. Uh, so this is the video activity. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, let's uh, choose one that is more collaborative. For example, the chat. So this is the chat when it's empty. And here you see these uh, tabs signify different sets of example data. So an as empty chat looks like this. A chat with some messages could look like this. Um, and this, again, are not uh, simple images or screenshots, but they are live uh, components, so we can add some chat messages. Uh, of course, what's more interesting is to look at how the chat activity looks when it's being used by multiple users. And so the preview uh, lets us add multiple users. We can click the plus button, and they just come with some random names. If we add four users, we'll see that they're automatically put in two different groups. So Chen Li and Maurice are in group one, Edgar and Noel are in group two. And this is just because it's often useful to test, uh, test activities where uh, you have multiple groups and where you see how the data is uh, synchronized. So if we go back to the empty chat, we see that uh, Chen Li can uh, chat with Maurice. And of course, Maurice can answer. And Noel can say hi to Edgar, and so on. Uh, very simple example, but it gives you a much better feeling of how this activity would actually work for your students in a real situation. Um, if you're interested in the underlying data structure of an activity, you can click on this button, and it gives you three different things. The first one is the configuration. So in this case, the configuration is very simple. It's the title of the chat. The activity data is the data that is coming either from a previous operator, uh, sorry, a previous activity, or from an operator. So it's the input data to this uh, activity, which is generated during the running of the graph. It's not pre-designed like the config um, the here. And the current reactive data, so the state of this shared activity, uh, you can find here. So here are the two messages that I wrote, hi Maurice. Uh, it's the user and ID of the person who wrote it. If we uh, choose the second example, we can see that, um, that we have some input data because this is uh, the example that comes with some pre-designed pre data. Another thing we can look at is the log files because learning analytics is very important to us. And so we try to make sure that all relevant user actions are logged in a uh, format that's easy to deal with for analysis. And so we can look at the actions that I've taken now. How do they look from a log file perspective? So we can click on this one. And here we see, first of all, I was playing a video. I was playing around with the video. And then I went into the chat. You can see here, this is the user ID. For, in this case, it's one, two, three, four. But of course, in a real situation, these would be hashes. Uh, this is the instance ID, in this case the group ID, so these are in group 1 and these are group 2. Uh, this is the chat ID, if you wanted to go back and look at that chat message. And here's the value, that means uh, what I actually said. 
And then you can also inspect the raw uh, log message here if you're curious. Um, and of course we have the time code here. So this is very helpful when you're, when you're trying to determine um, whether an activity is capturing enough information for you to be able to do your learning analytics, for example. Just to show you one other example of, uh, of an activity, um, we have the brainstorm activity where you can add ideas to a list. And here we have some different configurations. So this is an empty list and students can add ideas. But we also have a list with some existing items where students cannot add ideas, but they can vote up or down. So here I'm voting this up and this down. How does this look with groups? Well, if we have one group, of course, we can see uh, that this is uh, in sync. If we add another group again, we see that uh, the data is not shared um, across the groups. So these guys are in sync and these guys are uh, in a sec second group. Um, we can also have the third configuration, which is some existing items, but students can also add their own. So here we are in, again in a single group configuration and I can add an idea which will be shared with my group partner, which can be then voted up or down. And again, we can go and look at the underlying data. So here you see the configuration. Uh, we see the, this prompt for the students and whether or not students can add ideas. We see the incoming activity data that could be from a previous activity. And we see the current uh, state of the object, including the last um, note that I added here. Of course, we can also go back and look at the log and see how, what kind of log items this activity emits. So here we see, for example, the voting, the entering of a new idea. Okay, let's uh, look at the CK board, which is um, an activity designed to do kind of visual mind mapping where you can organize ideas. And so again, I can, uh, I can look at different, uh, different students collaborating and uh, moving ideas around. Uh, but if I wanted to see this in a full screen mode, I can use this button, which shows the full activity and then gives me the controls for the preview in this box that I can move around so that it's out of the way. Okay. So that's looking at all the activities that we have with the example configurations. An important uh, thing to note is that the URLs for these previews um, contain the whole state. Um, what that means is if I now go to update the code of this activity, it will reload with exactly the same configuration. Um, you see here it says AC image, it's two users, it's the example number two, and it's one window. Um, and this makes it also very helpful for development, which we'll see in a future video. The final thing I wanted to show you is how to use the preview in the context of the graph editor. In the graph editor, we have these three uh, lines and they um, distinguish between individual activities, group activities, and whole class activities. So let's just say I wanted to have a group, a whole class activity uh, to uh, add ideas. And I now select this and I open the sidebar and I say that I want to brainstorm, uh, which we just looked at. Now, again, I can just quickly preview the brainstorm. This is exactly what we saw before to get a sense of whether this is the activity I want. If I'm happy with that, I can choose this activity. I can add some guidelines, which you see right now, it's not happy. It's giving me red because I need to fill in the guidelines. So I'll say, what are some great ideas? I will say that uh, students should submit new ideas. And if I now click on the preview, I can see the activity exactly as I configured it. So here we see again the preview, but the title is what are some great ideas, 
And of course, the students can add ideas because I asked for it. Again, if I say they should not be able to submit new ideas, and we go back to the preview, well, we don't see anything. But here, there could be incoming data from previous activities. So I hope you, under, you appreciate that the, the preview functionality is a um, very powerful way of exploring the activities that we have available and the different ways of uh, configuring them. You can explore both the underlying data structures and the log uh, files and dashboards that are available. And it can also be very useful when you are developing uh, either existing or new activities to quickly preview uh, with different uh, data structures and with different user configurations. Thank you.